Hello traders, it's Sunday evening, February 26th. It's been a long time since I've done a Sunday night video, but I want to get two videos out per week as promised. I used to do a lot of Sunday night videos, so maybe I'll get back in the groove of doing that and that opens things up for me during the week as well. So let's take a look at the market. Let's take a look at some of our positions. As you know, my bias is neutral to slightly bullish. That's how I'm structuring my trades. I am focusing more on swing trading. So we've got a number of positions open that we're kind of monitoring and we'll find another one that I like tonight. So Sono is a stock that we sold some naked puts on. Strike price is $20. The net price to us would be about $19.40 because we sold those at 60 cents, March 17th expiration. Not worried at all about it. Love the stock, nice and strong. This breakout will be challenged. I'm okay with that. I'm going to take possession of the stock. F-S-L-Y. Love this breakout right here. Stock has been holding up relatively well, even with the market pulling back. By the way, you're going to see on the charts, there are lots of trend lines drawn. These are our new trend lines, and they'll help you identify support and resistance levels, as well as breakdowns. This is also something that we can search for, which is really cool. But you can see a number of breakouts here through these trend lines to the upside on FSLY. Really nice horizontal breakout above all the major moving averages. So we're selling the 1250 put. We were able to get 45, 50 cents for those. I like the stock at $12. I hope I get a sign because that puts me long at this breakout right here. Yes, I would like to own the stock there. So the market's going to chop around. I don't care. Time premium is going to tick away. If I do get assigned on that stock, wonderful. It's a good stock. I'd like to buy it at that price. And the price action tells me that buyers are active. Boeing sold an out of the money bullish put spread on this one, ran into a little bit of trouble, had to buy half of the position back last Friday. I gave you instructions on how to do that. We bought it back for a $1.70 loss on half the position. And now we are just naked long. The $200 puts with a March 17th expiration. I'm expecting some follow through selling tomorrow. By the way, right now the S&P 500 is up about two points. So very, very minor move. Doesn't look like we're gonna have a lot of action overnight, but we'll see how things open tomorrow. JD is a short that I highlighted on Friday. You can see the technical breakdown here below the major moving averages, trend line right there. This is a nice little breakdown with follow through. So I like JD on the short side. In this particular instance, you can short the stock. You can sell an out of the money call position, which in fact is what I'm going to be showing you in a minute. And we're going to do some market analysis first. Why do I have this slightly more bearish tone. Well, the market is pulling back. I am not bearish and I am not bullish. I am really neutral. Why? Because this has been the price action the last few months. We really haven't gone anywhere and you can see that there are lots of mixed candles. As soon as the market tries one direction and it stalls out, it tries the other direction. Then it stalls out and then it tries the other direction. Well, right now, the market tried to break out through some of these trend lines and it stalled out. So now we're getting a pullback to these major moving averages. So let me take the trend lines off. There is one trend line coming into play right here at uh, the midpoint of Friday's range and another longer term one down at the 384 level. There is also one that came up right through here and it's right between the 200 day and the 50 day moving average, which is where the market closed. So I'm going to take this off and you'll be able to see those major moving averages, 100, 200, 50 day. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a pullback here. Last week was pretty soft. A lot of Fed speak, hawkish as can be. We had some hot inflation numbers. So the market, in my opinion, yes, it pulled back, but you can see lots of doge eyes. These tiny bodied candles tell you that the market is closing pretty much where it opened. And yes, we are pulling back a little bit, but we are not seeing stacked red candles. That tells me that the threat of a major pullback is pretty minor. When you start seeing really long red candles like this and sustained selling pressure, this is what we call stacked reds. 
this is when you know you've got some heavy selling pressure, get a little bounce, and then whoosh, there's the next leg lower. We're not seeing anything nearly this organized, but I'm going to respect it. We've got decent volume coming in on this little pullback in here. So, okay, sellers have control right now. Let's see what they can do. I'll tell you that if we start bouncing, 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 and not able to penetrate through these major moving averages, then we're going to move sideways, and then eventually we're going to get a bounce. It's just what the market is doing right now. Buyers and sellers are paired off. So as long as the market is pulling back a little bit right now, I'm going to look for stocks with relative weakness. When it starts to flatten out like this, then we're going to shift gears and we'll take a look for some swing positions on the long side. I'm balanced long and short pretty much. I've got a long S&P 500 position that would be a full position, and I've got a half a position, short FXI, so I'm pretty hedged. And you're going to see, based on the positions I've shown you and the new position today, I'm just looking for stocks with relative strength and relative weakness, kind of balancing them out, pairing them off. The market's not going anywhere, so that's the overall tactic that I'm currently using. And when possible, I'd like to sell some time premium. So let's take a look at a list. I'm just going to go through heavy selling. This is one of our day trading searches that we use. And we're going to take a look at where some of these trend lines come into play. Take a look at some of these stocks. Really nice upward sloping trend line. Breach to the downside. This is Adobe. You can see there's another trend line coming into play right here. Stock bounced off of it on uh friday but not by much so this is some pretty heavy selling pressure this will be one to watch if it breaks below that i think it's got some room to go even further down and that would be the key point that you want to watch is that trend line right there ba this is the one that we legged out of you can see we've got two Support breaches on these trend lines right here, horizontal support. We've also got an upward sloping trend line right here. Plenty of room down to that 100-day moving average. This is why I felt we could leg out of this position. M -R -N -A. I'm just clicking down the list. You can see a couple of other trend lines are coming into play. This was a nice trend line breach. Earnings before the open, that's the B. We're below the 200-day moving average. Yeah, this is the really nice play. You've got a weak earnings reaction, technical breakdowns, moving averages, downward sloping trend lines. This is a low minus. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So you want to see what that stock is going to be doing if it breaks these upward sloping trend lines. We can zoom out a little bit to see where they come into play. Those are significant. Yes, if it breaches that tomorrow you can see some follow-through selling. B-A-B-A, -B -A, Baba, Alibaba. Nice upward sloping trend line right here. And again, these trend lines are automatically drawn. It's taken me a long time to program this logic. These lines are significant. How do I know? All you have to do is watch the price action up right on these price levels, on these breaches, and that tells you that yes, Lots of traders are watching these. Institutions are watching these technical price points. So Alibaba, nice breakdown here. Earnings before the open. So you get this long red bar. That's also a key bar. That's why it's hollow. That is a gigantic reversal. So the stock opens on its high, sells off the entire day, and now it's fallen through the 100-day moving average, 200-day moving average, and we had another up trend line breach right here. This is a really nice short. So I'm going to use this as my short pick of the night. You know that I want to distance myself from the action. Let the market chop around. Let it do its thing. I'm going to try and go out of the money. Give myself plenty of breathing room. So I'm going to be looking for options above the opening price here. Or very close to it. And I definitely want to be above this 200-day moving average because the stock is going to find resistance at that 100-day moving average, was support, now resistance. It's going to find resistance at that upward sloping trend line. It's also going to find resistance at that 200-day moving average. 
So, yes, I'm going to take advantage of this selling pressure and these breakdowns. Truth be told, I'm expecting the stock to go down. Why don't I just buy some puts? I could do that. I need to make sure that the market is going to be down overnight. I need to see that the stock maintains its relative weakness tomorrow. Then I could be more aggressive with a day trade on the short side, buy some puts for a day trade or maybe an overnight swing trade. But with the market being super choppy right now, I don't know what the market's going to do from one day to the next. If it just sits here and rests, which by the way, not a lot of economic news coming out this week. Normally you would expect the jobs report on Friday, but that's not coming out until March 10th. Looked at the calendar, pretty light, not really a lot to drive the market. ISM manufacturing, ISM services, that's about it for this week. So I think that the stock is going to have a lid on it. And that means that I want to sell some out of the money, call premium against it on the notion that it's going to continue to drift lower. So let's take a look at some options. We'll go into the option pricing. And this is all end of day data that we update. And we're going to take a look and see how far out of the money we can go. I'd like to sell a two point wide bearish call spread. So if we look at the 98 100, that gets us pretty close to the top of that candle right in there. That was 100. So right up in there is about as far out as I can get and still get some decent premium. Now, mind you, the stock is at 89. So it would have to rally 10% for this spread to be in trouble in the course of the next three weeks. I don't see that happening. So I like selling that out of the money bearish call spread. The strike price on it would be selling the $98 calls, buying the $100 calls. You can see that that's currently bid at about 30 cents, offered at about 40 cents. So we want to try and do that for a 40 cent credit because we have $2 between the strike prices. If we can get that 40 cent credit, I like it. And maybe the stock will get a little bit of a bounce tomorrow morning. Maybe it'll try and challenge that 100 day moving average. And if it does, then we would probably be able to get that credit. But here's how I would approach the trade going into the day. If you've got the market up considerably and you've got the S&P breaching this 50 day moving average, I would hold off on taking any short positions. There's no rush right now. The market's not going anywhere. So we do not have to chase anything. There is no compelling trade that we have to do right now because the market's not trending. So you watch the market open up. You see if the market's above the 50-day moving average, you hold off on entering any new bearish call spreads like this. So if the market starts to lose its steam and it starts to float back below the 50-day moving average, and if during that time you realize that, hey, the market's up nice, the market's up 10 S&P points or 15 S&P points, but BABA just can't get off the deck. Well, that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see that relative weakness. That's a sign that sellers are still there in force and that this 100 day moving average is going to remain intact. You can see orange line below zero relative weakness. That's why we want to do the trade. So if the market opens kind of a little bit bullish tomorrow, chops around, stays around the 50 day moving average, drifts a little lower and Alibaba can't get above that 100 day moving average, I'd be looking to get 40 cents selling to March 17th, 98 $100 call spread for a 40 cent credit. Look for a relatively quiet week in here. Big economic news is still a week away. We've got all the jobs reports coming out. They've actually been pretty decent. Not expecting them to deteriorate rapidly because the initial jobless claims numbers have been good each week. Right now, it's really inflation and the hawkish Fed that has sparked some selling pressure. But again, this move lower has not featured any long red stacked candles. Yes, the volume's a little higher, so let the market come in, let it find support. When it does that and it starts to move sideways, there's a good chance we're going to get at least a little bit of a bounce. 
So try and stay neutral, focus on relative strength and relative weakness, distance yourself from the action, take some swing trades, sell out of the money bearish call spreads on weak stocks, sell out of the money bullish put spreads on strong stocks. I think that's a strategy that's really going to suit you well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you this week. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.